Hey yo, it's Danny, and I'm back to share another video with you, my team, my battles. I did a video earlier, everything that I could possibly imagine went wrong. So today we are going to try to redo this, but I'm not going to try to include those clips because, in all honesty, um, it was just trash, and I didn't even waste my time. So um, I had put this took took in a. Uh, AR part for the video, so I'm just put it together and just put you on game of what's going on at the range that I went to the um, the wildlife management ranges that the government hosts. Um, I support those. I think they're important. I think that they are actually a good like starting point for people who want to go to ranges and really can't afford to spend a lot of money to um, to shoot. So you go to the uh, wildlife management shooting ranges if your state um, have it, and then you know. You know, you can uh, you can train for cheap. I mean, all you gotta do is get a hunting license, and some of them don't even require a hunting license. All you gotta do is write your name down, sign what you're shooting, and then you know you keep it moving. Um, with that said, um, let's let's put this together. Let's um let's chop it up real quick. I went to zero with my AR-15 with the 5.56, and in the process of zeroing the 5.56, I shot some 22, um, 223s. I mean. Not 22, but 223s out of it. And I was like, I kind of like it. So I am now have to reshoot. I have to re-zero this re weapon for um for 223 because toward the ends of end of the um the exercise, I realized that the bullet was having a drastic drop. It started raining, so I didn't really feel like I had the luxury to uh To try to sort of zero the range and all re zero the weapon, and then on top of that, um, it got really busy. There's like a lot of people started coming in the rain and all, so it just wasn't really worth the effort to try to zero the weapon. And I figured I had to come back because remember, I had um, well, you don't remember, but that day at the range, I was trying to zero my MP1522 and uh, my AK, but. I'm going to share with you the AK when it looks more like an AK. Right now, it has the poly um, polymer stock and polymer grip. Now, I ain't going to change the grip because I want it to look more tactical, and I ordered the folding scope. I mean the folding scope, the folding um, stock. So, you know, when I get it all set up, I'm going to put it together, and I'm, then I'm going to reveal it. I'm kind of trying to have it look more like the um, the tactical AR, and I'll probably cop, like, one of the wooden joints and then the Draco later on um, for all the intensive purposes. But that said... You know, um, pretty good day at the range. It started raining, kind of messed it up because a lot of the targets I was shooting at got wet. Now I have the white, the right in rain targets, and they're pretty good. But you know, I really hate touching wet paper. And I had some stickers for the nine. Turns out I couldn't even use it because um, it got wet. So I was trying to zero with the bush now, by the way, and I was gonna zero the iron sights. But again, I wanted to do that closer, and then it started raining. It made it a little bit more difficult. So I ended up just zeroing the scope for the 5.56 on this um, Bushnell. And uh, the scope on the, well, I had zeroed the scope for the M&P 15.22, so it was fine. But I was just making sure that it was nice and calibrated for um, for what I intended to use it for, which is um, an alternative to home defense. And also, also, I was trying to zero my AR, AK, but I think I have a little bit of twist on the front sight, so I don't know. I think that's normal though. I'm gonna make it tactical anyway. I'm really not gonna, I'm rarely gonna use it, so it's just really for show. Um, and I kind of wanted the sight that was not on the end of the barrel, but sort of on the gas chamber too. But that's a, that's another conversation for another time. Um, the range itself is pretty decent, pretty nice. You can shoot three. They have three different ranges. You can't, you couldn't shoot sl like slugs in the 50 yard and 100 yard um, ranges, but you could you could shoot buckshot or whatever, and you could shoot at even clays in the shotgun area. So that's one of the only ranges in Atlanta, at least, that does that. So that's pretty dope. If you're in the mark, if you're trying to, you know, practice your aiming, like if you're hunting and you're ski shooting, you could take it to that range and you could probably get some good work and you gotta pay for it, but I mean, it's some good training. It's a good training, and they provide the, they provide the clay targets that they're gonna shoot up in the air anyway. So you're kind of you're not taking a complete L, you know. They give you something. With that said, I would like to say, you know, oh, you can't only fire. Well, you could fire nine at the hundred yards, but why would you do that? That doesn't make any sense. 
you know I mean but to each their own with that said you know pretty dope range one of the bigger ones in the metro area in, in Georgia I think but I only been to maybe three you know and I never really spoke with you I told I tell people about these ranges all the time but I never really tell anyone like the experience or try to break it down I'm gonna get a video because it started raining again and so it kind of killed a lot of the things I intended on doing even speaking with some of the staff but I intend on going back and getting some details about the particular range and how it operates and why you know they do what they do and things they might change in the future but that was really it you know it was a pretty dope experience this is what I was firing guys you know you get your Bushnell scope the Bushmaster pretty nice ready for that suppressor I just don't want to pay um, I just put it together so we know it's quick, right? That's just really good. Whew. I've been looking for a new rod on the side, no man. Who does anyone know? Maybe I gotta go to like a um, army surplus because this right here isn't working right now. So I have to put like paper in there, like to kind of make it more girthy so I can thread it onto the rod. But uh, I need to get the one that you can clean the star chamber on the on the rifle because yeah. Yeah, it's not really working out the way that I wanted it to with um, anything else. With anything else. But yeah, ultimately it was a good experience. Unfortunately, I have to go back and redo the zero and all that noise just because it no longer is going to be used for what I intended it to be used for. And that's it. That's the, the gist of what's going on with me and how my range day went. Maybe you should tell me how yours go in the comments down below. That's really up to you. You don't have to. Also, while you're down there, you might as well hit that like and that subscribe. It help out the channel a lot. And I really, really, really do appreciate it. You know, it's really hard to, like, keep this stuff going. And, you know, you guys kind of provide some type of motivation. So hit that like and that subscribe, man. I appreciate you. Thanks, man. And um, enjoy the rest of your day. One. Look at that. Y'all can't even, you can't even get that. That is dead. That's damn near perfect. I'm like Robin Hood.